Let's look at how you might do these subway waiting time uh, calculations in a spreadsheet. Uh, this is completely optional. I just want to show you some fun spreadsheet skills. It's not required for the homework, um, but it's pretty neat stuff. All right, I've got all those uh, amplitudes from my previous analysis up here, and I've got the multiplier from out front. I've got a frequency term defined. I've got some time points defined here. And I've got my rate function defined, which is the multiplier times that whole quantity of constant plus this times cosine plus this times sine plus this times cosine 2t, etc. So that took a bit of typing. You might be wondering, is there a nicer way to do this? And there is, and I can show it to you if you're curious sometime. Um, but this is good enough for now. Uh, and then I'm going to fill that down. So that's just using the rate function at each time of day that I'm using here. I'm going in one minute steps. Um, and so I've got my rate function there and I've got my capacity of the subway line plotted. Uh, and I've got my count of how many people have arrived so far starting at zero, how many people have departed so far, again starting at zero, how many people are in the queue, uh, well we'll get to that. Um, and then here's the question, at what rate is A increasing? That would be A prime, the derivative of A. Well, the people are arriving at a particular rate, and that controls how many people have arrived. So A prime is just my arrival rate function, A of t, or R of t. Um, so I could say that my new A value, total people arrived so far, is my previous A value, plus the rate of change times what times how much time has elapsed between that time point and this time point which is delta t and i'm going to be sneaky and put a dollar sign on the c there we'll come back to that in a sec i'm going to compute delta t by saying uh, that time point minus that time point and fill that down i've got uh 14, rows basically uh, 1400 rows uh, if we go minute by minute in a day that's 1440 minutes and then, so that tells me the new A of T based on the old A of T. Can I do the same thing, just paste this over here to say what's the new D of T based on the old D of T? New value equals old value plus rate of change times delta T. And can I do the same thing for Q of T? New value equals old value plus rate of change times delta T. So that's why I put the dollar signs on the C so when I filled it over, it would keep referring to uh, delta t here. So I can fill those down, but those depend on these a prime calculations. Now a prime was pretty simple, that was just our arrival rate function. All the interesting stuff happens with d prime. How fast are people departing? What's the rate of departure in people per hour, or people per day, or whatever? Well, if a of t, if there's no q, then people just arrive and de then depart immediately, so the departure rate is equal to the arrival rate. If there is a queue, then we just work off the queue at the um, at the maximum possible uh, service rate. So if the queue is bigger than zero, then people depart at this service rate. Uh, that's this one. Otherwise, the queue is zero and people depart either at the arrival rate uh, or the service rate, whichever one is smaller. So the minimum of the arrival uh, rate, which is a prime, uh, or the service rate. So that's where all the interesting logic is. So we'll fill that down. And then Q prime is just how fast is the queue building up? Well, are arrivals happening faster than departures? If so, then the queue is building up. If arrivals are happening slower than departures, then the queue is getting worked off. So that part's pretty easy. So I'm going to fill that down. So this is the picture we had in Desmos. And it's kind of hard to see here, but um, there's actually two things going on there. Uh, there's the D of T curve and the A of T curve. A is in gray and D is in orange yellow. And the Q of T curve shows a little bit of a bump here. That's the difference between the two. So then um, we can ask, so basically we're solving differential equations there 
differential equations are equations where you know the derivative and you use that to determine the next value of the function is a simple way of thinking things. Um, so now we have all the same curves that we had in Desmos and we can go ask other questions like what's the average Q length? Um, so somewhere in here I hit a formula where we're taking the average of all those Q lengths. Um, so across the whole day the average Q length is 600 people but most of the day the Q length is just plain zero. So if we just average the Q lengths when the Q is non-zero then the average Q length is six is a 3,000 sum. We've got to zoom in uh, here on the Q length. You can see it gets up to just above 5,000, which on this scale doesn't show up at all, hardly. Um, but that's where the Q length is building and then dropping off again. So that's the average number of people in the Q during the time that there is a Q. That's not the average time per person. So to do that, we have to do more complicated things. So here I've got um, a bunch of more hidden formulas. So here I'm saying, and this is getting into extra special Excel knowledge, I'm saying if the Q is non-zero then give me what time of day it is, otherwise give me false. And then if I take the minimum of those, that is the first time that there is a Q. And if I take the maximum of those, that is the last time that there is a Q. So this is t sub q and this is t sub e. And then I'm doing the same thing for the arrival, for, for the cumulative arrival so far. So this gives me, let's see if we can find it here. When the q first starts, that's what time the q first starts, and that is how many people have arrived. And that's what I need to figure out how many customers arrived during the queue, uh, during the queuing time, and how long that took. Uh, and then we're also taking the integral of q sub t using the trapezoid method, average of the q values times the delta t um, plus the original plus the previous value. So that's the cumulative integral, and then the average queuing time is just um, all that. So it turns out to be six minutes, just like before. And so our Desmos analysis matches our Excel analysis. And everything is happy.